so such network i mean between the arab world and southeast asia also was developed not only the indonesia the indonesian modern era but also in mindanao in sulu for example this this i mean uh, this manuscript i mentioned in last monday that we have a manuscript telling us about the maritime uh, journey maritime hajj for example this is from 19th century from collection of sheikh muhammad Said. A brief Malay text narrating the voyage of Tuan Muhammad Said from Hudaidah to Mecca. The text says here that Tuan Muhammad Said sailed from Hudaidah, from Mindanao, and then to Hudaidah. Uh, when he arrived at a certain port on his way to Jeddah, the ship he had boarded was caught in a violent storm and wrecked. He made a spiritual vow, Nazar, praying to be saved. Uh, ya Allah, mudah-mudahan selamat, uh, in order to continue his journey to Mecca. And the text uh, say there that uh, he arrived uh, at Jeddah and finally reached Makkah. So this uh, also, uh, you, you, you can read there. Al-Kisah Tatkala Tuan Muhammad Said. When you find this manuscript, uh, you have to know the Jawi. Uh, you have to know the Malay. You cannot identify it unless you, uh, you um, uh, um, can identify it. And <coughs> here... Uh, fortunately, I think uh, we have um, a fascinating book by the late Professor Azumarji Azra. Uh, this book has shown to us that Southeast Asian scholars were regularly making their way to the Holy Land of the Hijaz, to Mecca and Medina, to undertake the pilgrimage, to study. Uh, Islam in the intellectual uh, and in, 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 in Mecca and Medina in particular and so on. Uh, I think if we read this book, we we we, we will we will not we can recognize that Shah Abdul Rabb Sinkel, an Aceh scholar uh, from the seventh, 17th century, for example, Al Sinkili, is the best example of the Southeast Asian scholar at the time who stayed in uh, the Arab world for 19 years, based on his own information in his work Umdat Al Muhtajin, uh, written in Malay. Uh, the other swiffer returned and bringing the manuscript, bringing the no Islamic knowledge to Indonesia, to Nusantara, to Malaysia, to Patani, and the proficiency in Arabic they had acquired back to South Asia, and this uh, translating the, the work, uh, vernacularizing. So this book is one of the best reference I, uh, references, I think, to understand the network of the Malay Indonesian world with the Middle Eastern uh, scholars in the 17th and 18th uh, century. Uh, uh, they, as I mentioned, uh, those who return to Indonesia, to Southeast Asia, to Patani, to Malaya, they translate the works and vernacularize the works. So we have many, many uh, translation and vernacularization works, uh, Arabic, and then they put the interlinear translation in Jawi, uh, for example. This one, for example. The, yeah, I, I quote uh, Peacock, Andrew Peacock here. He just published a book, a really good book. I think you, you have to read it about the, the Arabic um, uh, script relating to, to Indonesia and the Malay world. Just published in 2024. He said that after Arabic, Malay was the language of Islam par excellence in Southeast Asia. So we have to bangga, apa bangga? You have to be proud to to have this uh, Arabic and uh, translated work. This one for example, Amma Bandu. Adapun kemudian dari itu maka datang soal kepada fakir. Uh, it's in Arabic. Uh, uh, Saalani Bandu uh, Ashabi. Uh, uh, so there are many works Indonesian manuscript. I mean uh, written. Uh, uh, based on the request or, or istifta, yeah? uh, uh, istifta. Um, this one uh, this is the first complete Malay tafsir by Abdurrahim Asinkili the first Malay tafsir uh, 30 Jews yeah? uh, collection uh, manus this manuscript uh, collected in the Yayasan Ali Hasmi and also the uh, Arabic and Persian influenced work. Okay, I will try to be faster. Um, some of manuscript, Quran manuscript, which are uh, exhibited here in the Qatar National Library uh, as well, uh, some of the manuscript already studied by Professor Dr. Dato Annabel Tehgalo. 
So Gallup studies on Quran manuscript of Indonesia, very excellent. You can find uh, her article. And also uh, our manuscript contain, uh, maybe I, I'm not so sure here uh, whether or not you have the letters of manuscript. Letters, uh, the Arabic culture in the 19th century. Uh, we have letters in Arabic and Malay. This one, for example, Certificate of Appointment of Sheikh Abu Bakar Bastari Komering, South Sumatra. So, certificate of Appointment. I found a, a, a page here in the Qatar National Library. I forget the title, but uh, yesterday when Dr. Mahmoud um, um, invited me to, to look at a, a manuscript, the manuscript tells us that this manuscript is the contract of, of uh, apa namanya? land ya yeah. uh, uh, page of a land contract contract tanah gitu ya yeah. yeah this is uh, similar in Palembang also where the your excellency uh, come from yeah. uh, appointment of Syah Abu Bakar Komering South Sumatra ya yeah. and also uh, uh, of course Aceh ya yeah. this is in South Sumatra in Palembang uh, my college uh, his Zuriat, uh, I think, of the Sultanate of Palembang, the Islamic manuscript in the private collection still there and in danger, affected. So we have to preserve it. We have to to conserve. Yeah, letters. This this one, for example, letters from Sheikh Muhtar Komering uh, in Makkah to Tuan Guru Kemas Haji Umar. Uh, even from 80, from the, the uh, 20, 20th century in Palembang, telling us about the, his learning condition, apa kabar, uh, but uh, written in Jawi, yeah, written in Jawi. And of course, we have Sheikh Nawawi Al Jawi Al Bantani at Tanari, a prolific Indonesian author of Arabic manuscript, but some of his manuscript. Uh, I'm not so sure to found in Indonesia, uh, mostly in libraries in the Arab world, uh, like this one, for example, Omdat al Awam fi Sharafaidil Malik al Alam. This is part of a collection Jamia al Malik al Suud, King Suud in Arab, Sharaf Omdat al Awam. Um, I remember that uh, the, our vice, our current vice president, K Maruf Amin. Uh, would uh, develop a museum of Sheikh Nawawi in Banten. In uh, yeah. this, this, this is uh, uh, part of the uh, uh, Arabic uh, works by Sheikh Nawawi. Very, very, uh, very uh, uh, prolific uh, writers at the time in the uh, 19th century. So, I would like to say that uh, quoting the our pro uh, professor, the senior professor Ah Jones, in the book by An Kumar illumination that Arabic manuscript reflect the texture of Muslim life and thought and are an important component of the processes by which Indonesia came to have the largest Muslim population of any country in the world. So I think uh, this is about the significance of Arabic Indonesian manuscript and I quote uh, Andrew Peacock as well that the extent of Arabic uh, production, literary production in and for the region has been greatly underestimated by earlier scholarship. Unfortunately, that uh, Indonesian Arabic uh, manuscript um, still less studied. So Andrew Peacock, uh, Peacock encouraged us to reconceptualize our understanding of the relationship between Indonesia and the Arab world through manuscript. Um, I have my own impression from the exhibition of the Arabic script in Indonesia um, uh, in Qatar National Library. I am very impressed that I have uh, um, uh, my own impression is that Arabic script in Indonesia is very important in terms of religious and intellectual Islam thoughts. So Indonesia is not the peripheral part of the Muslim world, but the integral part of the Muslim world. You can see, you can find the collection of the Indonesian Islamic manuscript, both written in Arabic and in local languages, uh, side by side with the uh, Islamic civil civilization from other world, from Iran, from Turk, of course. Uh, I, I think this, uh, this is my own uh, impression of the, your exhibition. Um, uh, we remember uh, Pak Jones, for example, um, said that 
there was hardly any realization that Indonesia was an integral part of the Muslim world. Yeah. So um, he suggests us. Uh, and then, uh, excuse me, how still left the time? Yeah, okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, in these slides, in the next slides, the topic of, uh, I, I would like to say that the topic of Wahdatul Wujud is one of the major issues since the early formation of Indonesian Islamic manuscript until around 19th century. I would, I would like to say here that the, the, why we have huge numbers of Islamic manuscript, because one of the issues is uh, Zubism, uh, Wahdatul Wujud, for example. So Indonesian Islamic ministry saw us the early diffusion of Zubism in Southeast Asia. The Sufi idea of Wahdatul Wujud had a major influence on the development of Islam in Southeast Asia and its manuscript as well, um, both in Arabic and local languages. This one, for example, the, 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 the oldest one, one of the oldest one, I mean, by Hamza Fansuri, of course. And... Uh, I forgot which one or not here, I think. And another one is by Samsudin al Sumatrai, Jauhar al Hakai. And this one is um, uh, Tufa al Mursalah by Indian scholar Fadlullah al Burhan Furi. Uh, also, this one, yeah, uh, Setengah uh, Ahadiyah, Wahdah, Wahidiyah, and so on and so on. And that one is the uh, Sharah. And this one, Ithab Adaki, is the commentar of the Ithab Atufa al Mursala. I did research uh, about that, and I presented uh, the book to Doctor uh, <coughs> um, Tan Huizem. Um, another example is the Al Mawhab Al Mustarsal ila Tufa. Uh, this uh, I would like to say here that. Uh, the issue of the Wahdat Wujud in this context this, uh, 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 received uh, international response. Uh, I mean, the conflict in Aceh at that time received the international uh, response from the international orders. One of the manuscript is here, Sharh al Mawab al Mustar Salah, Anatuf al Mursara. Uh, although it's written that the author is Sha'ab Darub Sinkal, um, I doubt it. Uh, I think it's not Sha'ab uh, Darub, but uh, it's written by Sha'ab Ibrahim Al Sami Al Azhari. Uh, we need to, but uh, uh, Dr. Ismail uh, Yahya already uh, uh, did and made a critical edition. And one of the conclusion is that the author uh, is, and, and also Andrew Peacock. Uh, one of uh, his conclusion, the order is the uh, somebody from uh, Al Azhar, but uh, he he was in Aceh at the time, and this is the controversy of uh, Wahdatul Wujud by Hamza Fansur and Samsudin Al Sumatrai. Oh yeah, this one, this one is Jauhar Al Hakaik uh, found in Aceh uh, in Minangkabau in small small uh, surau in Minangkabau. Yeah, respond to the controversy of Wahdatul Wujud. Wahdatul Wujud is in Jawa, Manunggaling Kaula Gusti. Yeah, so it's uh, something like that. And then we know that in the 17th century, there is opposition to the Wujudiyah doctrine, Araniri, yeah, from Araniri. Um, such controversy for me was a stimulus of the dynamic and emerge, emergent of the critical works. Uh, the Atibian, Fi Ma'rifatil Adian, for example, this is the best known polemical works uh, in Malay. Uh, Tibian, Fi Ma'rifatil Adian. Uh, Araniri in this work condemned Samsuddin and Hamza al Fansuri. Uh, you, can, you can read there. Falamma zahara qawmun minal wujudiyah azzanadiqoh al mulahidah addolalin. Addolalin. Mintil midah. Samsuddin al Sumatrai al Ghawin, and then the translation is maka tat kala zohir kaum wujudiyah yang zindik mulhid zindik min negative term ya lagi sesat daripada murid Samsuddin Sumatrai and so and so and so the Indonesian Islamic manuscript are very very uh, insightful for me. Um, in fact, the it's uh, it's clear that the main contribution of the Hijaz. I mentioned about the Hijaz uh, as the hub at the time. 
The main contribution of the Hijaz to the intellectual culture of Southeast Asia was the transmission of ideas of Wahdat Wujud and the attendant debates around the implication and correct inter interpretation. So we can see here the uh, through the cases of uh, Al Gauss Al Hindi, Sibuhatullah, Fadlul Al Burhanuddin, and so on, the scholars reside, uh, resident in Medina uh, were uh, very influential in Southeast Asia because uh, in Mecca uh, they met, and Ahmad Al Kusasi and Ibrahim Al Qurani were uh, two uh, great uh, teachers of our Indonesian authors, Nuruddin Araniri, Abdul Yan Sinkili, yeah. Uh, both Al Kusasi and Al Qurani taught a wide circle of students in Mecca and Medina. Uh, among them, uh, so from from controversy to uh, istifta and fatwa uh, resulted a huge number of the manuscript. And this is the Ithab Adaki manuscript uh, written by Ibrahim Al Qurani, Indonesian Islamic manuscript, not written by Indonesian authors. Ithab Adaki represent Arabic Islamic works whose the author try to reconcile the controversy. So after, uh, after the controversial works uh, the, um, uh, result resulted uh, um, the the uh, works to reconcile it, uh, uh, memoderasi, yeah, memoderasi. Yeah. Uh, let's say for example this I highlighted this 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 phrase that al jamu muqaddamun ala tarjih mahma amkan. So to to unite the uh, both uh, different ideas uh, is better rather than to to apa namanya rather than to menyingkirkan salah satunya. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My English is not too good. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, bilang Arabia. Walau jamu mukadamun ala tarji mahmaamkan. But sometimes I'm sorry in Indonesia. I, I would uh, say Indonesia because this is a joke. Sometimes Indonesia kadang-kadang kalau di Indonesia bagian ini itu diplesetkan pada dubes. Wal jamu mukadamun ala tarjih jamiyah nahdlatul ulama katanya didahulukan daripada tarjih majelis tarjih Muhammadiyah. Wah, saya bilang itu bukan begitu maksudnya. Gitu. La, 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 la. This is to moderate to reconcile the the, the two. This is uh, my uh, publication about that uh, work, Ithab ad daki published in 2011 uh, 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 in Archipel, and the book also already published. And also the Tanbi al Masi. This, uh, the, uh, the, the such response not only from the great uh, uh, authors in the Arab world, but also from the Indonesian authors, from Aceh, for example. Uh, Tanbi al Masi is the in reinterpretative work uh, by Abdul Raub Singkal in the 17th century. So this is the most influential contribution of Asin Kili to Arabic literature in Southeast Asia. Tanbi al Masi. Uh, you you can see the uh, the uh, paragraph I highlighted. Idaro aita ahadan minhum yakulu inna al alam wal asya ainul haq. Fa'lam anna dhalika la yashihu illa bin nadri illa ma fil azal. Wa huwa yaqulu aydan ayyuma rajulin qala li akhi ya kafir faqad ba'a biha ahaduhuma. So this is a kind of moderation of the two uh, controversial sides. Yeah? Not too extreme uh, to in the left side. Not only, uh, not uh, again uh, to, 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 to the, the, the extreme, extreme uh, right side. Something like that. Um, this is the um, publication of uh, Ithab al Daki. And this is uh, um, uh, one of the, uh, the instruments to produce the huge number of the Islamic manuscript, also, because the doctrine of Wahdatul Wujud is well disseminated through Satria Sufi order. Uh, one of the main Khalifa was Shah Abdurraub Ali al-Jawi al-Fansuri. So Sufism was very crucial in the early formation of Islam. We have found manuscript of Sufi order. I mentioned about the, the uh, Kanjeng Ratu Kadipaten, the wife of Hamongkubono I. Uh, 
uh, uh, she, she, she was a female Sufi. She female Indonesian Sufi. So Shatria Sufi order was one of the most influential um, Sufi order at that time. This is the publication. So long period production of the Shatria manuscript, both in Arabic and local languages, thanks to the Shatria students around Nusantara. But unfortunately, the manuscript, especially the Arabic manuscript, Indo and Indonesian Arabic manuscript, still less studied. When I studied my master and my PhD, my doctoral in uh, University of Indonesia, for example, uh, the students at the time uh, taking philology, only two percent, <laughs> so, only two. So, so um, uh, yeah, uh, 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 and uh, only only me to to study the Arabic manuscript. So the others, Malay, Japanese, and so uh, still still less studied. Uh, why? Why the importance of the Arabic manuscript is very important. Let's say, for example, this one. Yeah, I found this manuscript of um, Al Bawani, the unknown 17th century student of Asin Kili. Almost all scholars, Professor Azumari Azra, Professor Michael Finner, um, uh, have a conclusion that the uh, uh, only Sheikh. Only Sheikh Burhanuddin, who was the student of uh, uh, Sheikh Abdul Rob Sinkal in the 17th century from Sumatra. But we have this manuscript. The Sinsila is clear that this person, I mean this Al Bawani, was the student of uh, Sheikh Abdul Rob Asingili. But uh, yeah, we, we, we need to verify it because the the, the, he had he, he had the many Arabic manuscripts. And Pagan Shatari manuscript also belongs to the family of Chirbon Peles, for example. This in Pagan, uh, written in Pagan, yeah, in the Kraton Chirbon, in the Peles. Ikilah kitab ing dalam anyatakakan turun-turune dedalan Shatariah kang tedak saking Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, there are many manuscripts uh, like this. And this uh, Pagan manuscript also of Sisilah Kanjeng Ratu Kadipatin, I mentioned about that. And I wrote uh, an article about that, uh, female Indonesian Sufis uh, in the 18th and 19th century, published in Kyoto <coughs> University. So uh, I think this uh, last, not, not the last one, but uh, the end of the, my slide. So I think uh, from my presentation, uh, one of the uh, things we have to do is the, we need to provide any research infrastructure of Indonesian manuscript, catalog, database, online database. Right? I think it's very important because Indonesian Arabic uh, manuscript um, um, already listed by Peacock, but there are still many in Marawi City, for example. This less never studied, n not studied yet. I mean. <laughs> Uh, or, or about uh, 43 manuscript from the collection of Sheikh Muhammad Said. Prayen and Azimat, Sufism, Fiki, Theology, mostly in Malay and Arabic, and uh, only, I think, uh, no more than 10% uh, in Magindanao, in Maranao language, I mean. Yeah. So, uh, we in Indonesia, in our center, um, we launched since uh, 2018, a program DreamC, Digital Repository of Endangered and Affected Manuscript in Southeast Asia. This project DreamC is to digitize manuscript in Southeast Asia and to put them online, open access for researchers. So I think uh, this is the result until now. Uh, I'm the one of the principal investigators of the, uh, the project with Professor Jan van der Putten in Hamburg University. Uh, DreamC is achievement until uh, 2020, or, or already digitized the uh, almost half million pages of the ministry, and we'll put them online, uh, available online in in this website, yeah, in dreamc.co. You can find it by Google, I think. But yeah, we need, we still need support and collaboration. Support and collaboration are very crucial to encourage more readers and researchers. I. Uh, put my motto in, in my book that philology is about reading manuscript. Once a philologist only read a minu only one manuscript for uh, his or her thesis or dissertation, um, not enough. So philology is about reading manuscript. When I really love when I 
visit a place like yesterday with Dr. Mahmud, uh, I found a manuscript. Wah, this manuscript, this manuscript. So, semangat, ya, yeah, semangat. So, apa semangat? <laughs> yeah. So, very enthusiastic. This is in Bandung. Eh, eh, sorry, in well, Bandung, in Bandung. Yeah. There are uh, 500 manuscripts. Oh, a manuscript, okay. Sundanese. And then this in Marawi City, this in Palembang, this in in Minangkabau, in Minangkabau, in small collection. There are many still neglected. So, um, for researchers, I think research on Arabic influenced Indonesian Islamic manuscript are very important. So I hope that Qatar Indonesia uh, Indonesia Year of Culture uh, now is a timely momentum to encourage uh, researchers and students maybe. Because, why? The reason is because Anthony Reid, our professor said that, the tradition of maintaining the academic study of what are now called the regional languages and literatures of Indonesia can be considered finished in Holland. Holland, uh, Leiden University was the center of excellence to study manuscript at the time until 2011. But now, in 2011, uh, KITLV closed, and our report piously said that this baton should be passed to Indonesia, the country with the central responsibility for preserving and studying its literary heritage. So it's very important to, for us to do a cooperation uh, and making Indonesia a center of action to study the manuscript, Indonesian Islamic manuscript. I, I, I try to popularize the Indonesian manuscript through my channel, Ngariksa, through social media. So in every two Jum'ah, I read the manuscript uh, live streaming in Facebook, and I put the videos uh, like now, for example, <laughs> I record and I record this video, and we put them uh, online. Menatap uh, masa depan, merawat masa silam. And uh, finally, uh, let me close my presentation with a quotation by our senior uh, mentor, Professor Aha Jones. Uh, he said that it is works such as these that the Muslim elite wrote for themselves and each other. It is from a study of such works in their regional settings that a clearer and perhaps more worthy understanding of Islam in Southeast Asia may be won. So the Arabic Islamic literary culture in Indonesia and Southeast Asia brought Muslim in this region came into contact with the larger Islamic community which had a great literary tradition, and by so doing arrive at the same level of other communities that had used Arabic script before them. Thank you very much. <laughs>